quick disclaimer and everything. Hello, and today we've got something a little bit interesting, a little different, uh, and probably a little echoey, but that's fine. I've got three hard drives of varying type and manufacture. Uh, all of them are failed, dead, or obsolete in some complex way. So first we have a Western Digital, that was this, a 500 gigabyte, I do believe, and it is completely dead, SATA interface. Next, there is a Western Digital, yep, this one's a 500 gigabyte as well, and it's actually an IDE interface. I don't quite remember where it came out of, but as you can tell by the screw here, I have attempted to open it, so maybe I've opened it in the previous hard drive video. No idea. And last, we have this Samsung 250 gigabyte drive, SATA interface, uh, quite a different look. I've actually never opened or used a Samsung hard drive before, and the first one that came to me was pretty much completely dead. In fact, I don't think it boots anymore, so uh, I don't know if that's a good reputation for them on hard drives, but then again, you don't buy Samsung hard drives anymore, do you? Let's get started. We're going to use our typical kit here, although just as likely the competitor set will work as well. Anyway, you'll typically need a torque screwdriver. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with the most common hard drive I'm used to looking at, which is just kind of a Western Digital SATA hard drive. And I believe that's right. So that's a uh, Torx, what is that? Eight, it looks like. And one note for anyone that's never opened a hard drive before is that under these black stickers is in fact another screw. So you'll need to undo those and you'll typically know it's free because the sticker will come off and then the screw will come out. We're gonna take all of these out here. If your tool has the ratcheting, use it to your advantage. If not, just keep on screwing it. All of these are on here kind of relatively easily. And it might not still come out because typically under this label they have one more additional screw. You can either find that by kind of feeling around or just feeling for the little bump. Right there is the bump. So we just have to dig for a second until our tool bites. And there you go. If you need to extract the screw fully, you probably have to cut the sticker either with a knife or just your sharp screwdriver. But either way, you don't even have to remove the screw completely as long as it's no longer threaded. Next thing is that there is quite a little bit of a seal on most of these, so you'll typically need something to pry it out with. A little twist and it should pop open. Oh, or you'll lose the bit and not be able to open it. And you're in and your hard drive is ruined, uh, especially because you probably can't see it. Oh, it can get a perfect reflection. Where am I here? There's the camera. Very beautiful mirror. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hi. Hi. How's it going? I see you, camera. Can you see me? Anyway, we'll go ahead and tilt this some way to hopefully not uh, destroy everything here. Uh, anyway, you can't see because it's such a perfect mirror, but I've already gotten some dust on it. Uh, the next step for taking this apart uh, say you want to take the platters out for decor, or you want to take the magnets out because they're great magnets, uh, or maybe you were trying to repair a stock head, you would just scoot it over and destroy every sector along the way. One thing we can go ahead and do is take off the PCB on the back. That's actually relatively simple. It's just more of the same torque screw. We'll show an interesting feature they have. Typically, these just pop right off, if I got all the screws. Yep. And they actually transfer the signals from outside the drive to inside the drive by having little contacts on the PCB here and little contacts on the actual, this little plastic insulating material. It has a bit of little contacts that go through it and allow data to go in and out of the actual hard drive part. And depending upon the style, there might also be contacts that drive the actual motor. So we can see there's four pads that 
have little indents on them. This goes to our little stepping motor thing there. And there's four little contacts in the PCB. All right, now that we've gotten more dust on the platter, uh, we can go ahead and start taking some things out. Uh, at this point, you just kind of randomly pick and choose things to take out, depending upon what you're going for. This is actually the contact assembly here that we showed on the other side. And it's just fastened in there with more of the identical same torque screws. Of course, for obvious reasons, they are not magnetic because you don't want magnets kind of in and around your hard drive. That will pop out momentarily, and I'm just quickly checking to see what style of hard drive this is and how parts are going to come out. Sometimes this is a screw here, a flathead type. Sometimes these are screwed in, sometimes they're not. And it might just be the magnets holding this one in. And I might have to try to prise that out. You typically, if you're trying to get the platters out easily, I would take out the head assembly first. But if you notice, there's a little bit of wiggle room, so we can attempt to do that first. These torques can be a different size, and I do believe they are smaller. I'm going to go what I think is the next size down. Sadly, this disc spins because obviously it's supposed to. If you're not working with those cotton inspection gloves and in a clean room, you are going to ruin the perfect mirror finish. Hmm, I wonder if taking this central hub out would make this easier or harder. When taking these apart, be very careful. These discs are fragile, and if they shatter, you're going to be very disappointed because you're going to be probably having a trip to the ER. I was lying. This central hub is, in fact, not a screw, and we will not be taking it out. I'm going to attempt to hold this hub in place. I'm sure there's a more correct way that I've done this before. Yep, I must be missing something obvious that I usually do because I've never actually had trouble with this before. Let's skip around and see if I can figure it out. Here's a screw here. I think it just holds a plastic piece in. Nothing very exciting there. Should just be separating the platters. I can also... So you can see the head moves. It's actually free. All right, I'm gonna have to go ahead and get a larger screwdriver to pop out the magnets. Again, use caution. These magnets are gonna to wanna to snap down. I highly, avoid, I highly suggest using gloves or something to avoid smashing your fingers in as it would hurt. Also, your, if your tools are magnetic, they're gonna be getting attracted to it as well. So there's the first magnet. And with this loose, oop, I've now scraped the disc. Um, it's possible this might come out, although it might not. We might need the actual platters to be free. This one's becoming slightly more complicated than I'm used to. So I apologize for the delay. There we go. That was way more complicated than it should be. This ring will now come out, and I believe you can start removing platters from this type. And there you go. Set these aside on somewhere hopefully dust-free. And if you notice, because we removed the screw here, we can take this plastic divider out. This next ring will come out, and followed by the second platter. This is apparently only a two-platter design. Oh, be very careful there not to... Uh, shatter the disc there, although I might be wrong about these shattering. We're going to remove this small screw here for the brake. Ah, oh, here it is. Take that peg out here, and now we can move that out of the way. And now, hopefully with no trouble at all, air quotes, our second platter will come out. Next, you would just lift off carefully. Remember, this is an incredibly sharp device here. Lift out this magnet magnetized head assembly. Yes, again, very, very sharp. And that comes out, and your bottom magnet can be freed after removing this screw.
This motor, I do believe, takes a hair more work to take out, although I think you just pop it out. And so you can see that leaves us with this little rubber spot here, and, you know, the pretty much permanently attached flex right here. I'm pretty sure you can't take this off anyway. Imagine they have it glued down quite well. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if there was a trick to getting these motors out. If either you could punch through that or if it's just lifting it out. It's a little sticker here for some odd reason. Oh, and at one point this fell out. It's a little air filter they stick in there. It actually allows the motor to, or the, the whole hard drive assembly to breathe. With these magnets, this is a piece of new metal which actually kind of absorbs the magnetic field into it. So the other side is virtually non-magnetic. I mean, it's there, but <clears throat> the field is quite diminished. The other side, of course, is the full strength. Uh, it is possible to remove these magnets. They're partially held on by a thin amount of gluing and also by the actual magnet onto the metal, of course. Uh, and so you can sometimes heat them up. One method works is by taking pliers, taking pliers, gripping the sides, and kind of bending like this, and the magnet should be, either you can get a grip on it or remove it. Another method involves simply, hopefully using a non-magnetic tool, uh, as you can see how difficult this is, but pushing off. Just remember that neodymium magnets uh, are kind of like ceramic and everything, and that if you give them slight stress, they will shatter or break or crumple. Uh, so be very careful. And of course, these are highly magnetic. They are relatively dangerous. You do want to avoid uh, smacking two magnets into each other because if they hit at even the slight off angle, they, one of them or both of them will shatter and that's uh, quite dangerous. Um, but it is kind of fun to leave them on these so that way they're relatively safe on one side. So, you know, you stick it to I don't know if this is, it's all cast aluminum, but uh, say you stick this to some metal surface somewhere, the other side is actually fairly calm. You don't have to worry about walking by and something just being sucked at it. Uh, but you can remove the magnets if you want to. And if you see, they, they do stick quite uh, rapidly to each other. Uh, on the PCB side of things, it's fairly simple. Uh, this is such, a, such, since it's such a later model, the drivers are obviously put down to just a couple chips. I think somewhere on here is a motor driver, uh, and then you've just got the main controller with, I think it's probably all completely integrated. We'll definitely take a quick macro and look at the uh, spec sheets. A few jumper options that are typically not used in SATA models. It's just one connector they stick on there. It has all the appropriate connections. 30, 35th week of 2008, maybe. And yeah, there's not, nothing too incredibly complicated on here. There might be a voltage regulator somewhere in the back. It's basically nothing but bed of nails test points.